Um, all right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Xiao. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, optimize, uh, how to improve authenticated garbling for fast secure two-party computation. Uh, so this is a joint work uh, with uh, Jonathan Katz, Simon Lucci, and uh, uh, Michael Roslick. And uh, so a little bit of advertisement, uh, I'm going to join Boston University and MIT for a one-year postdoc, and I will start uh, at Northwestern uh, since uh, from next year. Uh, so as we know, there has been a long line of work to how to improve the efficiency of maliciously secure two-party computation in the uh, past 10 years for the concrete efficiency. The first implementation of uh, maliciously secure two-party computation is by Pinkers et al. Uh, roughly 10 years ago. At that time, like a malicious two-party computation, it's going to take roughly a thousand seconds to evaluate a AES circuit uh, with malicious security. And then we have been working for, with like, a lot of effort to try to reduce the cost of evaluating AES like, uh, in, the, in, the, in the following 10 years. So the state of the art is, uh, uh, is the protocol uh, so-called authenticated garbling uh, that can actually evaluate AES with roughly 37 milliseconds. So if we look uh, with a little bit more detail, so in the semi-honest case, uh, we roughly need like uh, 20 milliseconds to do the base OT, and then the rest part of the computation for AES is like uh, 2 milliseconds. For, for, for authenticated garbling, the base OT is roughly the same using the state-of-the-art OPT protocol, and the rest of the computation is roughly 17 milliseconds. So this is uh, really awesome. And in this talk, we are going to further improve the rest of the computation part by, uh, by a big margin. Uh, so before I talk about the maliciously secure two-party computation, let me first give a, a very, very, very brief intro introduction on what is the semi-honest version. So, so it's a very, it's like the classical uh, your garbled circuit where, the, where Alice uh, holding a bit is going to uh, garble a circuit that is representing the, uh, the function. Alice is also going to send the uh, input key for her own input as well along with the garbled circuit. And then they are going to run some protocol called the oblivious transfer to, get, to let Bob get the input key for Bob's own input. Uh, so here, uh, orange, uh, orange objects are kind of constructed by Alice, and blue objects are related to Bob's uh, stuff. And then uh, Bob, getting all these kind, all these objects, can evaluate uh, the garbled circuit using both parties' garbled key locally and get the result. So authenticated garbling roughly works in three stages. Uh, the first stage uh, is, uh, call, is called like function independent preprocessing where we actually compute a lot of uh, authenticated version of N triples, like uh, Beaver triples. And then in the next stage uh, is so-called function-dependent preprocessing, where we actually use all these N triples to compute uh, a single authenticated garbage circuit. And then in the last phase is the online phase, where they do something like oblivious transfer and stuff to get the input keys, uh, and, the, and the, uh, Bob is going to evaluate it. So in the previous paper, uh, what we can do for one AES is that uh, so the preprocessing takes roughly uh, three megabytes of communication, or like 10 milliseconds of time to, for one AES. And then the function-dependent phase uh, is going to be a garbled circuit. And this garbled circuit contains four rows. It's like the classical version of garbled circuit. And for each row, we need a kappa plus row bit. So among these kappa plus row bit, the kappa, the kappa of them is for the original uh, garbled keys, and the row bit is for the authentication of the masked, bit, masked value. Uh, so, in, so in this work, we actually improved the function-independent preprocessing and the function-dependent preprocessing. In particular, uh, we, reduced the, we reduced both communication and computation uh, in the dependent phase by a big margin, and we actually make the, the state-of-the-art garbling scheme, that is, the half-gate, compatible with the uh, uh, authenticated garbling. Uh, we also strip, strip, uh, strip off the Mac uh, from four row bits to just one bit. So, uh, so with like, all this stuff, it means that uh, uh, it actually uh, solved a one of, partially solved one of the open pro pro uh, problem that was uh, uh, mentioned in one of the a few of the previous papers on how to make half-gate compatible with distributed garbling. In the, but we only did it in the two-party setting. This also imp uh, indicates that uh, uh, so now, uh, if we want to do maliciously secure two-party computation, the only difference is, is function-independent preprocessing. After the function-independent preprocessing, the protocol is almost identical. 
and, uh, and uh, in the semi honest case, they are, they, we don't need any function independent preprocessing, but in the malicious case, we need, we need to construct some authenticated end gate. Uh, so let's uh, start with uh, some introduction on the uh, authenticated uh, uh, goblin to give some idea of how the improvement works. So let's start with a bit authentication. In the, in the, in the bit authentication, uh, Alice has a bit X and Bob has the authentication key, that is delta B. Uh, so, so if we want to authenticate a bit, then Ali, uh, Bob has a uh, so-called Mac key, and Alice uh, has, a, uh, has a Mac on, on this bit. So the relationship is that this Mac is going to be the same as the key if X is zero, and the Mac, uh, and there will be a difference of delta B if, uh, the, X, if the bit is one. And we can generate, uh, let, let's say if we, uh, if we want another, uh, if we want to authenticate another bit, we can just uh, do the similar thing, except that the delta, the, the global authentication key is the same. The, the, the consistency of this global authentication key gives us some kind of uh, exomorphic uh, in the sense that if we have if we have Mac on two bits, then we can compute the XOR of them locally without uh, interacting at all. So now, once we have uh, we can, once we can locally authenticate a bit, then we can authenticate secret shares. Uh, it's uh, it's quite simple because we can we, we just need to do it two times two times with different direction. Now we just need to uh, so everybody holds one share of the bit and everybody just authenticates their share of the bit to the other party. And the relationship is also uh, symmetric. Yeah. Okay, so now let's, let me introduce another ingredient of, uh, of authenticated garbling, which is uh, the garbling scheme proposed uh, in, uh, by Dan Garley Ishai in 2005. So here, let's first talk about the environment uh, in, in this garbling. So let's say we have a wire A, then, uh, then in the goblin scheme, uh, Alice is always going to know a masked bit associated with this wire and also the two garbled label associated with the wire. As the evaluation goes on, uh, like all the, all the uh, wire values is going to be defined, but we don't want anybody to learn this value because this is uh, actually, this is some secret value that depends on the input. So instead, we actually uh, let Bob to learn the masked value, uh, of, masked value of the wire value. Uh, that is the head of the alpha, uh, the, the A. And, the, and then in addition to that, we also uh, let Bob uh, to learn uh, the, uh, the garbled key associated with the masked value. So now let's uh, go to the, uh, the garbling part of, the, of their scheme. So, in part, uh, so let, now let's say we have an end gate with uh, A and B as the input wire and C as the output wire. So now the, the garbled table looks uh, uh, like this, which is a little bit complicated, but we, let's use the example of evaluation to explain how it, uh, what it is working, what it is doing here. So let's assume that uh, actually Bob has two masked value, uh, one for each of the input wire. Let's say uh, on, the, on the A wire it is zero, on the B wire it is one. And from the environment, we know that uh, Bob also has A zero and B one. So, uh, so what Bob is going to do to evaluate this gate is that Bob is going to pick the second row uh, where uh, corresponding to zero and one and uh, strip, off the, strip off the hash out of it and get a bit and a garbled label. So now I'm going to claim that uh, using this, because of the construction of the garbled table, uh, we, we actually can make, make sure that the, con the invariant still holds. So why this is the case, uh, so here, here is a very simple deviation. So the first equation is by the definition of uh, uh, the wire value. The, wire, the output value is the end of the input value. And then the second one is due to that we are using the second row, and that is what, how it is constructed by the Alice. The last two row is, uh, the last two row is because we have a head of A as zero and a head of B as one. So if we just do some, uh, some very simple elementary math uh, from, uh, by combining all these equations, we actually get that uh, the output bit, uh, the output bit in, is indeed the mask of the output wire. So now let's uh, talk about authenticated garbling. So authenticated garbling, the first step of authenticated garbling, we try to uh, make it distribute, computed distributively among two parties. But this is a little bit too, compl too complicated, so let me just first focus on the first row. So because we want to make it distributively among two parties such that nobody knows the row, so we can't let the Alice uh, learn the masked bit. So we are going to, mask, uh, to hide it out of, uh, from Alice. So let's see whether they can, whether they can uh, how to distributively compute this row. So for the first part, it's quite easy because Alice can compute it directly by herself locally. 
So it's a part that is uh, after the XR. Well, so, uh, so the first part is just the one bit, and uh, like, uh, we, we can find a way to do it easily. Because, the because what's hard is the second part, because this is a kappa bit garbled key, and we want to compute this kappa bit garbled key distributively among two parties. And this is going to be the focus. So what we are going to do to compute this uh, garbled key distributively is that uh, we, can, uh, we are going to align free XR with authentication. So in detail, let's, see, let's suppose that we want to compute uh, the label C lambda, where the lambda is a secret bit. So first, we are, we are going to apply the, so, uh, the famous free XR technique and express this label to uh, the C label uh, XR with a shift. And then we are going to align the free XR delta uh, with the authentication key. By aligning align these two, we are essentially uh, align the labels with the max in the information theoretic mac. Now we can do some simple math. So since lambda is a secret shared bit, we, we are going to share it um, by, by lambda a and lambda b, each hold by one of the party. Uh, and then, like uh, as uh, like as uh, like uh, now we see that lambda b delta a is actually the XR of the information theoretic mac uh, on lambda b. We call that the, uh, we call that the picture is like this, where uh, Bob has lambda, the Mac of lambda b, and Alice has the key of lambda b. So now we see that actually the first three parts is local is owned locally by Alice, assuming that they have authenticated share of uh, of uh, lambda. So from a summary, uh, we know it's like uh, if we have authenticated the share of a bit lambda, we can obtain the shares of uh, lambda b delta a. Which we are give, uh, we are, which we give, give two parties uh, shares of lambda, lam, uh, C lambda. Uh, so uh, let's uh, like uh, let's uh, take a step back and uh, like uh, have a high level view of exactly what's going on. So now we have a, if we have a row, we are going to secretly share it among two parties, uh, and uh, and uh, and we want to compute all the content in the garbage table. And uh, the previous slides already tell, me, tell us that if we have authenticated share of the bit, then we can compute the garbling, uh, authenticated garbling of the corresponding row. Fortunately, uh, this head of the zero is a linear combination uh, of a set of uh, masked bits, that is lambda a, b, c, and lambda a and b. And similarly, if we have this set of value, we can also compute the authenticated shares of other, other bit, and, and um, that also in, that actually indicates uh, authenticated garbling of the rest of the rows in the garbage table. So from a high level view, the, uh, the protocol will works like this. We will first compute authenticated end gate, and, send, and the both party will get the share of the end gate. And then they will locally compute authenticated garbling on the, on the end shares. And then Alice is going to send her, her share of the authenticated garbling and the input keys as usual. And Bob is going to reconstruct a authenticated garbage circuit locally, and the, the rest part is uh, essentially identical to the uh, semi-honest case. And, and, and Bob can, uh, later can evaluate this circuit. Uh, but there is one problem uh, over here. So the problem is that we haven't ensured the correctness yet, because Alice can essentially just trick the garbage circuit in any way he wants, as, as long as the garbage circuit is correct, but to compute some function that they don't want to compute down. So the way that we are, the, uh, we, uh, the, the way to handle it is to add a mask on top of it. Uh, so now we are going to ma add a mask on top of the bit that is shared by the two parties. So let's say if Bob actually want to uh, want to open the first row of the garbage table, then Bob is going to use the uh, use the authentication mac key to check that this bit is indeed correct. And by doing so, we can actually make sure uh, that the that the correctness can be guaranteed. So now the protocol is uh, tricked a little bit. So we are going to, uh, along with the authentication of the authenticated garbage circuit, we are also going to uh, associate four max uh, with each of, the, each of the gate. And then during the evaluation, we are going to evaluate and authenticate each of the gate one by one. OK, so now everybody has a little, some idea on how authenticated garbage works. Let's uh, talk about the improvement on top of it. So our first, party, our first idea is that we don't, want, we don't really want to do this, uh, send these max because they are long and, uh, and we need to send it per gate. So uh, let's just get it out and, th and think about what exactly we, what we want to do. So suppose that uh, uh, actually Bob is going to open the first row, then Bob, is, uh, Bob essentially wants to check that the key, uh, key that he obtained is, uh, is consistent with the first mac. And if it, is the, if it is another case, then Bob essentially wants to check that uh, the updated key is consistent with the second Mac, and so on. 
So this is actually very, very, uh, like we, if we want to do this kind of distributed Mac checking without knowing which Mac we want to check, it's actually very, very expensive. But we realize that uh, we probably can make the masked, masked bit public to both parties. Why this is going to help? Because now everybody know uh, which Mac that they are checking then, and, and the bit is public, then they can actually check the bit, check the Mac essentially for free. It turns out that uh, it is indeed secure to, pub to uh, make this bit public. The reason is that the, this, this, mas this masked bit is masked by a mask that is shared among two parties where nobody knows the, the, the actual mask. So this public bit, this bit is actually r random to both of the parties. Okay, so now we need to trick the protocol a little bit. So instead of sending the Mac, we are going to send, uh, we are not going to send the Mac, but we are going to uh, let Bob send all masked wire values um, to Alice. And this is going to be one bit per end gate. And then uh, the Alice and Bob can locally compute the candidate Mac and do, the, do a equality on the whole string, uh, which, is, uh, which is, if we amortize it among the circuit, it's essentially free. So now let's, uh, now we don't have the Mac, let's see how to make uh, the uh, gobble table smaller. So uh, as, as, as we go in the semi honest case, we first have a gobble row reduction and then we come with the half gate. So let's first, uh, let's do the similar thing in the, in, in the authenticated case. So if we, as a very high level summary in the authenticated goblin, we take the uh, damn shy goblin and make it uh, distributed. So our first attempt is that, okay, so I'm, we are going to uh, first apply uh, a gobble row reduction, there is a typo, and then make it distributed uh, to, the, uh, to the authenticated goblin case. So let's see for how to make the damn isha goblin uh, uh, compatible with the uh, gobble row reduction first. So, uh, so this is the gobble table that we see before. So what is, a, what is GRR? GRR essentially means that we are going to make the first row as zero. Because if the first row is zero, then we don't need to send the first row. And so if we work out the math carefully, it, it means that uh, we can set the zero label uh, as this uh, little bit complicated formula. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so this implies that uh, the, uh, the, first, the C of head of zero is going to equal to hash. And if we put it back to the formula, we, get, we can find that actually G, G zero becomes, uh, 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 becomes a zero. However, uh, it looks fine in the, in the, in the, set, in the setting where Alice garbled locally, it's actually not compatible with the authenticated garbling or any uh, distributed garbling scheme. The reason is that in, G, in GR3, the output key actually implies all these uh, masks that we want to keep secret. In particular, let's say if we, if we, know, this, if we know C0 and we know, we know C0, A0, and B0, we can, and we can essentially just brutal force all possibilities of the mask to find what's, 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 actually, the best, what's actually the correct combination that leads to, leads to this formula. So we cannot just uh, use GRR directly. So how are we going to do it? So we are going to, uh, think, uh, we are going to think in more general what GRR actually do. So GRR actually means that uh, uh, I'm not really want, I don't really want to make the gobble, gobble row zero. I just want to make my communication zero. So this means that, okay, so let's say that we, we have a, our original uh, uh, authenticated goblin. What we are going to do is that uh, we, just make, we just want to mix this row as zero, which is already, which is, this is a distributed version. If we start from this point, actually it means that uh, this, the shares should be, should, should be the hash of the input labels. And if we work out more carefully, it means that actually the, the zero label it now depends on the, high, the input labels as well as some, uh, some shares. So although this formula looks, uh, uh, looks as if that, uh, the, uh, that, the, bit, that the output uh, key still depends on the input, uh, uh, all the masks, but actually it does not. It only depends on the input garbled keys and all the masks on the authenticated uh, end gate that we are computing. So now if we apply the same idea on the half gate, it, it becomes much easier to understand. Uh, so the first part uh, to, to make the half to make the to make half gate uh, construction distributively uh, computed by two parties, uh, this part is easy. We can essentially just distribute the the, the part that is after the hash, uh, following the same idea that I mentioned previously. And for the output label, uh, we are going uh, and and for this actually uh, the underlying garbage circuit is the same 
at the half gate. Uh, the formula is the same. And for the output label, we are going to have the, have the shares in a similar way. Although it's, uh, it's written in a similar way, it's actually a different formula for output keys. Because Bob does not have a share of the output keys, and this is the only definition of the output keys. And uh, for the more details, please refer to the to our paper to see how it works. And uh, in addition to the uh, function, independ function dependent preprocessing, we also had a bunch of more optimizations for the function independent preprocessing that, that uh, compute authenticated AND gates. And so the first uh, optimization is that uh, if we know the function, the circuit in advance, then we don't really need to compute all the authenticated AND gate uh, independently. We can actually apply some optimizations proposed by Araki et al. last year and the reduced number of AND gate, uh, number, number of authenticated bit used in the protocol. So in the second, uh, and the, the second optimization is that we can actually compute the leaky AND triples uh, much more efficiently by, uh, by using some techniques from half gate. But due to the time limits, uh, I won't talk in detail about it. So uh, because of all these optimizations, actually, so our protocol works in, with two versions. The first version actually minimizes the total cost uh, from uh, including all stages in the computation. And the second, uh, second version actually minimizes uh, the function dependent phase and the online phase, uh, and not, con not, not including the function independent phase where we compute all the authenticated gates. Uh, so if we compute, uh, so, for, uh, so among previous work, uh, there is only one work in the malicious setting where the function dependent phase is the same, is the, is the same as the semi honest uh, Garber circuit. It is, uh, it, is, uh, it is a work in NDSS last year. So compared with their, their work, actually we can achieve the same uh, function dependent and online cost with the total cost uh, roughly five times, four times smaller than theirs. And compared with uh, the best previous result in terms of the total communication, uh, actually we can Pull off most of the pull off most of the computation to the function independent phase without really increasing the total cost. Um, so after so so now uh, so I I would I would imagine everybody will be very curious about how it works in a multi-party setting. Uh, so I'm not going to spend 20 minutes another 20 minutes to talk about it because we actually don't know how to do it. Uh, yeah, so why this is, also, so let me give some idea why this actually, uh, why it is hard. Suppose that we have uh, three, four parties, we are three of them are garbleless, and this, uh, this gentleman here is the evaluator. And uh, so, in, so from almost all distributed garbling, every garbler is going to have a pair of sub-keys. And uh, so if we follow the generic paradigm, every, uh, so what they are going to do is that uh, every, every bar, so they are going to construct three copies of uh, sub-garble circuit, where each sub-garble circuit is garbled um, uh, using one party's garbled keys. So over here, the yellow shares is, is done by, is for garbled one, the green shares for garbled three, and the purple shares is for garbled two. So if we apply, actually we can apply half gate, but even after we apply half gate, we can only reduce the, the size of the garbler circuit for the, for the, for the garbler themselves, which means that it actually does not increase the, efficient, increase the efficiency a lot. It's uh, at most by a, a factor roughly one over number of garblers. So what do, we, what do we really want is to reduce the size of the garbler tables among all, for all of the shares, which seems uh, very, very hard. Uh, so uh, we think it might be possible, uh, but uh, and here are some uh, potential directions. One is that we probably can use some uh, kinds of key homomorphic PRFs proposed uh, last year uh, in Azure Crypt, or we probably need to use some other variant of uh, garbage row reduction. Thank you. <laughs> 